What's really at stake for me in this competition is my reputation as an artist. What's at stake for everybody in this competition is $250,000. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with the newly crowned winner of Netflix inaugural season of Rhythm and Flow, D Smoke. Man, how are you? I'm doing amazing. You're doing pretty well? I've had a... Uh... An amazing day to start off. A yes. pretty busy day. Yes. I, I first have to ask you, just watching that clip, what was it like um, hearing T.I. say Nick, that you were the winner and also Chance the Rapper and Cardi B both calling you a big superstar? Man, it was it was surreal, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I felt like a winner going into the show. You know, yeah. I had I got some good experiences that made me feel like a, a fulfilled guy prior to this, but to do something of this magnitude and, and come out on top with so many talented artists there like that I have the utmost respect for and, and still be the winner is like, it's amazing. There aren't words for it. When did you film the series? Because I know it was a while ago, so you've probably been sitting with this news, huh? This, the, series, the series wrapped um, on March 1st. Oh, wow. March 1st, So a yeah. long time. How, long how did time. you keep this secret? Uh, it, was a, it was a hard keep, a secret to keep, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, I just, you know, stayed close to the cuff. Uh, stay creative and we were working on music for this time just in preparation so it just gave, gave us time to um, to prepare you know well you come from a big musical family right if I remember your mother is a piano instructor um, your brother is also involved in music um, and signed to Kendrick Lamar's label right? absolutely absolutely um, Top dog and, entertainment. yeah and you have also received an ASCAP award for co-writing a Jaheim song never yeah. which I absolutely love Thank so you. I have to ask what made you decide to go into the reality competition route um, you know what? Uh, I went into the reality competition route because it just presented an opportunity to uh, put my music on a global platform. Yeah. I think it being on Netflix made it very appealing because I, I was like, okay, Netflix is everywhere, one. And um, with Netflix having such a strong background in doing documentaries, I felt like the show would uh, separate itself from other uh, reality shows where competition shows that kind of set one precedent and this one is kind of you know it being on Netflix it being uncensored it made for a, a great opportunity to to do what I do and be appreciated for it so. well what's so cool about it is that nowadays artists are making it by promoting their music all over social media mm -hmm. and you of course have uh, taken that for sure yeah. um, what do you feel like is kind of missing though in the hip-hop culture these days um, what's missing in the hip-hop culture well one I on one hand, I feel like the hip hop culture, it's, it's healthy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but just something that I would like to see a little more that I feel like I'm contributing is um, crossing over into tapping into different cultures. Right. You know, so um, I'm not a native Spanish speaker, but being able to tap into that um, is being met with a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of positive response. Yeah. And, um, and it just shows that, you know, we're in, we're in a global, more of a global, arena where people can appreciate that in music so despite my background not being a, a native speaker so that's something that I look forward to sharing um, in my music and, and with the public. A lot of people loved the rap battle element that was going on in the show and I'm curious what you thought about that because mm -hmm. uh, it really harkened back to a lot of the days on you know 106 and Park and a yeah. lot of the things that we've come to hip-hop fans have come to love. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's kind of missing? Um, I wouldn't say the rap battle element is so much missing because there's a strong uh, rap battle following, you know, uh, Smack and everything that he's doing. Like there's they're like devout rap battle fans. So that's fully intact. Um, I think the show put it in its proper perspective and having it there as an element of hip hop, but also not leaving it there because as a complete artist, you want to be able to tap into that battle energy, that aggressive hip hop energy, but still grow from that. Yeah. And um and you know, show what you can do in the studio, show what your presence is in a music video and in a larger scale performance. So um, I feel like the, the battle rap is, is on this show, it's kept in, in perspective, you know. Yeah, what I loved about it is that it gave me a good perspective on artist development. Do you yeah. think that's something that hip hop could use more of? Um, or music in general? Music, music can definitely grow. Um, I think artist development will be good for the culture. Yeah. You know, um, you don't want to, overshape an artist to to where you have these cookie cutter artists coming out but in the same sense you want to give people the opportunity to to develop certain skills so that you have um, you have them into more of you know hone them into more of themselves as an artist so um, I think that would be that would be dope and I it, it set a precedent for that as well that's something you haven't seen you know yeah 
I love your background too because you're a teacher, right? Yeah. And yeah. you know, you had all this success in music, but you never kind of pursued it full time. It felt like you were always staying with the students. Were your students? Well, I'm gonna correct you on that. Well, so I did. I, I was I was pursuing it full time. Um, I was just working double time. You were working you know? double so, time, which we um, all need to do these yeah, days. Ac absolutely. If yeah. that's what you want to do, you got to do that. So um, I was teaching full time, and then for nearly as many hours as I was in the classroom, I was either in the studio or um, what teaching allowed me to do is like fund my own music videos and projects that I was doing independently. Wow. So whereas a lot of people kind of got to get out and um, and just see who can, you know, sponsor them or fund their movement, I was uh, funding a lot of my own independent movement and which, which served as my advantage in the competition. When they said, all right, now you got to go and do a music video, that was something that I've done several times on my own dollar. So now that we got a budget, it's like, oh. oh yeah, that's a little bit you know? easier. Yeah. Well, it's great because somebody like Chance, who's on you know, the judging panel there, has also found a lot of success independently as an artist. Sure. And um, I also appreciate that the prize doesn't come attached to any sort of a record Strings deal. Strings attached, right. Right? So what are you right. going to do with the 25K? Um, well, 25K. 250 I was about to say. <laughs> I was hoping 25K would come to me. That's nah, not quite. Not quite, my <laughs> man. No. What are you doing with but, the 250K? Um, with the 250K, one of the first things we're going to do, um, we're going to give out a couple scholarships at my old high school. So my project that I'm going to come out with is called Inglewood High which is Amazing. both the high school that I went to and the high school that I taught at when I first uh, graduated from UCLA. Yeah. So um, with that being the case, we want to go there and do something tangible for the students, um, primarily students who want to pursue uh, language, a second language or a foreign language as their primary uh, field of study. So um, that's something we want to do. And then I'm looking at doing some investments in Inglewood because it's a uh, it's a rapidly growing city. There's a lot of developments with the stadium being built there. Um, I want to be at, at the forefront of, uh, of you know, investing in properties and some of the community development that's happening there so that uh, we kind of can bridge the gap between everybody that's coming in rapidly and, right. you know, the community that's been there for years. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you care so much about your community. Uh, I was really touched by your story on the show uh, about how much you stayed focused really on the impact of your father's release from prison Absolutely. And, and what that kind of meant for you um, and how you kind of, it changed your perspective on gang life as well mm -hmm. and it really helped with that. I'm curious what you feel your position as a teacher mm -hmm. um, and how that kind of, how you're able to help youth do the same. Oh man, as a teacher you just, you take a deep dive into so many people's lives and um, you just find that within, because I always taught in the inner city, so it's so many, you, you see this repeating story of the community being broken, fathers being missing from the home, so um, me sharing that experience allows me to reach out and, and both identify with them, but also provide an alternative in like awesome. what it means to be, you know, uh, what healthy manhood looks like, you know what I'm saying, for a lot of guys who, um, young kids who express that in some toxic ways, so um, that experience is very near and dear uh, to my heart because it, it it provides that duality at the same time like had pops been in the house the whole time I probably wouldn't be rapping. I'd probably be singing and just doing classical piano Right, but that element where because before he came home we I talked about it on the show some like I was fighting a lot I was in trouble and um, you know, I, I had just mad anger that I was dealing with and I still have that but being able to channel that into something uh, positive I think that's what that's what my, that's the duality of my uh, artistry. Yeah. I am curious, have you heard from any of your previous students yet? Oh, a lot of them. So oh, what so have they been saying? What's their reaction? Oh man, the students, they're, uh, they're hitting <laughs> me up. What I love is when they, when they post videos of them watching the show, uh, you know, taping me on the yeah. screen, and then they're in the background going nuts. They're like, <laughs> Mr. Ferris, let's go, you know? And, and so I'm reposting that stuff, like, man, shout out to all my students because to to the world right now, that's a story. Like, yeah. oh, him and he's a teacher, great story. But to my students, it's lived experience, you know? So they're like, they're like, man, it's overwhelming. So many people are sending me messages like, man, I'm in tears watching this because they know that the energy that I try to put into my music, I brought that to the classroom every day. So, and, and it's real, you know, you can't script that. What about Cardi, Chance, T.I.? Have they reached out to you uh, since the big win? And when are you guys collaborating? I, I I want a big super song. Okay, so me and uh <laughs> me and Ti, me and Ti have 
had regular conversations since the show. Um, Chance and I have had some key conversations where he was able to um, drop some knowledge and give me some advice. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cardi, I'm still waiting to hear from Cardi. But <laughs> right after she's the busy. show, she's filming oh, yeah, Fast she's, and the Furious well, right she's now. Cardi B, you know. <laughs> and right after the show, she definitely told me like, "Smoke, we gonna connect, we gonna work." That's awesome. You know, and she even said that in the first round, like, "You could write for me." So. I'm gonna hold her to that. Yeah, you better hold yeah, her to yeah, it. What yeah, about Kendrick believe. Lamar? Has he reached out with any advice or? Kendrick Lamar has not reached out. Um, I've spoken to some people that work very close with him. Yeah. And um, it's all love. I had the opportunity to meet Kendrick. My brother who signed at TDE, yeah. he brought me out on the uh, damn tour, um, you know, and because he was right after that going on his own tour. But, you know, we met, you know, and my thing is if I consider myself among the same company, Right, if I consider myself an, an artist of that caliber, whether the world knows it or not, I'm gonna act accordingly. I'm not gonna be like a fan, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So we just chilled. It was just a cool session. I wasn't asking for advice. You know, your experiences will give you all the knowledge you need to carry through because your movement is yours. They can tell you what they did, but that had everything to do with the circumstances that they were in. So I wasn't really asking them for advice. It was just to be there and let them know that I consider myself among the same company and, you know, we, we could just chill, hit a workout, do whatever, you know, so. Cardi had said that she's glad that she didn't know anybody's stories because she would have really, it would have affected her. Yes. She was watching it back and talking about, some of them are so sad, I wish I wouldn't have voted them off. Right. So hopefully they keep that aspect, too, away from the judges. Oh, absolutely. That. And I think they were really intentional about doing that, like yeah. making sure that they're judging based on their performance, based on their stage presence and all of that, so. And I feel like just looking back at it, I'm overwhelmed. And shout out to the people that edited it. Um, yeah. I'm overwhelmed at how what I, what I believe was supposed to happen happened in, in, the, um, in the long run. So I'm really proud of you. It's hard to go into a competition like that, see your way through it. I think you did excellent work throughout the hey, whole thing. Thank you. Thank now, you. Now every fan wants to know, and me included, when we're going to start hearing some of this new music. Got you. Well, um, the Inglewood High is out now. So That's, all right. Inglewood High is out now. It was released on October 24th. So go ahead and pick that up. And um, and we got something else coming at the top of the year. So. Okay. Top of the year. That's yeah, So that's I'll have soon. two projects out. Yeah, I have two projects out um, before February. So Thank you. Any features in the meantime? Uh, yeah, there are some features. By, but the features are primarily by my family on these projects. So. Okay. Um, my cousin Tiffany Goucher, my brother Sir, uh, my brother Davion, um, a friend of mine named Shalia Nicole, and then a young homie from L.A. who's an incredible rapper named Tommy Sketch. So nice. right now I'm t keeping it close to the cuff. And then as we do more collaborative works with popular artists, we'll probably drop them as singles, remixes, and yeah. create moments around those. But I wanted the projects to be intentionally like a, a, a bubble of my experience. So. Right. Prior to, you know, diving into, you know, the collaborations that will naturally happen. I'm looking forward to listening to it and diving in. I, I really wish you the luck with this. It is it is so hard to kind of come from a big competition like this and mm -hmm. see your way through it. Yeah, yeah. But you seem to have the right structure around you and the right system and the right people giving you good advice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm blessed to have a good team. So.